So today we're doing something a little different. We're taking the DJI Neo 2 down a full mountain road to see how well the follow mode can track a fast moving bike in the real world. No controlled test, no flat open field, no slow cruising. This is a proper downhill ride with changing speed, tight corners, trees everywhere, and cars occasionally coming from behind. If you've ever wondered how the Neo 2 handles real outdoor movement, this is the kind of run that gives you the answer. Right now we're starting at the top of the hill. The bike is just getting moving, speed is still low, and you'll notice the drone has no trouble staying locked on. At slower speeds, the follow mode feels almost effortless and the framing looks very steady. But the real test begins as we start to increase speed and let the bike roll naturally down the mountain. As we move, keep an eye on how the drone positions itself. For this ride, the follow distance is set to far and the height is set high. This gives the drone enough clearance to stay above passing cars and helps prevent sudden emergency movements. If you ever film on public roads, this setup is the safest and smoothest way to use follow mode. Now the bike is picking up speed, we're crossing the 20 kilometer mark, then 25, then past 30, you can already see how the Neo 2 reads the environment. The trees on both sides hang in slightly, but because we set the height high enough, the drone stays clear of them. It holds a clean line behind the rider and keeps a stable frame, even when the view ahead becomes busy. As we go deeper into the descent, speed starts climbing. You'll see moments where the bike hits 35, sometimes 38. Depending on how the slope changes, and even with all these shifts, the Neo 2 stays surprisingly smooth, what makes this interesting is how the drone handles acceleration. When the bike slows down entering a corner and then speeds up again coming out, the drone doesn't jerk, jump, or panic. It adjusts its pacing naturally, almost like a human following from behind who already knows the routes. Up ahead you'll notice the first car approaching from behind, even though it passes close to the bike, the drone doesn't make any sudden movements. Because we set the follow height high, the drone stays above the car and keeps the rider centered. This is something a lot of lightweight drones struggle with, but the Neo 2 manages it well. And just a moment later, you'll see another car come through with the same result. Smooth, no sudden climbing, no harsh avoidance. Um, now the slope gets a little steeper, the bike lets go, and speed starts to climb again. We hit 36, 37, 38. This is where the drone's tracking algorithm starts showing more of its personality. It keeps distance steady, holds height, and flows through the turns without losing the rider. The path here has several bends where the scenery changes quickly, but the Neo 2 doesn't overreact. It doesn't flare up, drop down, or slide too wide. Instead, it glides through the movement in a way that looks very natural. This is actually the point most people don't notice unless they review the footage frame by frame. The Neo 2 has a way of smoothing out small speed fluctuations. When the bike enters a corner and naturally slows, the drone anticipates it. When the bike pushes into a straight section and speeds up again, the drone gently accelerates. It doesn't slam forward or shoot backward. This helps keep the shot usable even when your speed isn't constant. Now we're entering one of the fastest parts of the ride. On a straight downhill stretch, the bike pushes close to 40. Listen closely here. You may even hear the sound of the drone working harder. This is also where you'll see the first hint of the drone approaching its physical limit. DJI rates the follow speed at around 42 km per hour, but in real conditions, wind resistance and altitude can reduce that a bit. Once the bike hits the mid-40s, the drone starts falling behind slightly. The rider becomes smaller in the frame, and you can see the drone fighting to keep up. This doesn't mean the tracking fails, it simply means we've reached the drone's maximum follow speed. Any small drone this size is going to struggle beyond 40. If you're planning to film downhill rides where speeds reach 50 or more, you'll want to manage your braking so the drone has a chance to stay with you. It's not a weakness of the drone, you know, it's a limitation of lightweight hardware. You'll notice that even when the speed goes beyond what the drone can physically handle, the tracking doesn't collapse. It doesn't swing wildly or fly unpredictably, it just slowly drifts back, keeping the rider centered for as long as possible. That consistency is what matters for follow mode. 
predictable behavior means safer flights. Uh, um, a little later in the video, we'll talk about testing this with a motorbike. Faster vehicles help reveal what the drone does when the subject fully outruns it. Does it hover? Does it try to reacquire? Does it continue forward along its last known path? All of that needs a different test on a safer, wider road, but it's something we plan to explore in a future video. For now, watch how the drone manages this next sequence of turns. Even with multiple tight bends, the tracking stays smooth, there are branches on both sides, but the drone chooses clean paths without sudden popping up or dropping down. This shows how mature the obstacle avoidance has become. It's not perfect, but it understands the environment well enough to avoid unnecessary decisions. As we get closer to the bottom, the cyclist starts controlling the speed a bit more. Staying around 35 or 36 keeps the drone well within its comfort zone. If the brakes weren't used at all, the bike would easily climb into the 50 range, and at that point, no lightweight drone would be able to keep up. So managing your speed depending on the shot you want is the key to getting usable footage. Now we enter the final straight. The road opens up, speed increases again, and once more you can see the drone begin to drift back when the bike reaches the mid 40s. At this stage of the ride, the drone is simply hitting its limit. You'll see the rider becoming smaller as the distance grows. To help the drone resync, the cyclist slows slightly and the drone pulls itself back into a stable follow. We're now at the very bottom of the hill. A short section ahead and the run comes to an end. After reviewing the entire nine minutes of footage, the result is surprisingly good for a drone this size. The follow mode is smooth, stable, and reliable. Obstacle avoidance handles branches and passing cars without drama. The tracking logic adjusts naturally to speed changes, and for creators who work alone, cyclists, travelers, outdoor reviewers, this is one of those tools that genuinely makes solo filming easier. If you want to see more tests at higher speeds or with different vehicles, let me know in the comments. For now, sit back, keep an eye on the speed changes and how the drone reacts, and enjoy the full ride.